My name is Tom, um, customer support specialist at uh, Infernotice. Uh, we may have interacted before uh, either via email or Discord, so it's a pleasure to meet you here. Uh, as you guys saw through the invitation, uh, we will be talking about how I have been using Infernotice um, as a really excellent tool in part of my uh, personality research. Uh, I myself am not uh, necessarily an expert in uh, personality or typology. I'm just a, an avid user over the last several years and um, have some some real fascination with with the tools um, and have actually discovered Infernotice originally um, while I was looking through that um, and how I can use it for, for uh, just my discovery process. Uh, I am doing my first webinar here, so please bear with me uh, if there's any issues. We have uh, Dimitri is with us, but uh, on the move currently. So if there's any issues, um, hopefully there's not, we can get them covered. Um, and so we'll jump in. My goal is really to have this be um, kind of an exploration of, of my thought process and how I'm applying this tool uh, to the research that I'm I'm doing uh, with personality and typology. Um, as many as, uh, as many as you might know, uh, Infernotice is is used heavily for doing network analysis. And um, if you've read through some of the Notice Labs or Infernotice materials, you may have seen some conversation around ecological thinking and, and some of the foundational thought behind uh, how many users and or Dimitri in particular has uh, created this tool. Uh, I myself see that each of our our own selves are a combination of our our nature and our nurture, and therefore uh, we ourselves are a network of various experiences um, and genetics which combine to form who we are, um, what's manifested both um, outwardly and inwardly. Um, our conscious and subconscious. Uh, I believe that um, by basically combining multiple personality assessments, we can kind of learn more about ourselves. And so a little bit more about, about that. And by the way, at, at any point you have any questions, uh, please feel free to add that to the question and answer. If it's immediately relevant, I will get to it. If it's something that is uh, something more technical that I may not be able to answer about some of the uh, scientific backgrounds of, of Infernotice and what's happening, we can uh, put a pin in that and I believe Dimitri will be able to join us more um, at the end of the conversation or we can just try to get to that um, at the end anyway. Um, so basically my, my thought process in what I'm doing with personality research is, uh, is based off of the fact that um, there are a number of different personality assessments. Uh, many of you may be familiar with them. Some of the, the most popular ones include the Myers-Briggs MBTI, uh, the Enneagram, Big Five or Ocean, um, Strength Finders, uh, DISC, Human Design, all these different tools and assessments that leverage um, various different paradigms and methodologies in order to uh, categorize and label and help one to understand themselves or any person in particular. As is the case with a lot of different assessments or even paradigms in general, they're they're rooted in the language and in the methods that they're using. And so while they may be powerful for their particular use case, uh, each of them may have some type of blind spot. Uh, they may have some uh, areas where they don't really capture the fullness of a person. So what I got started with in particular using both um, some uh, chat GPT, AI, and also uh, Infernotice was my my goal was, or my thought was, if I could bring into, bring together what multiple personality assessments are looking at, um, and I can kind of combine them and I, I can, I, I want to find what is in between them, what's hidden, what is maybe emergent. Um, so whereas one personality assessment or strength assessment may look at uh, more more business oriented or relationship driven things and another one's looking at more interdynamics and another one's looking more at um uh, even something as uh like astrology or something like that maybe people don't value that but it has some aspect that is um categorizing a person 
And so my thought was, if I can bring these things together, if I can bring multiple personality typology and strength assessments together, um, I can begin to understand where there may be patterns, where there may be paradoxes, resonance and dissonances, um, and where there is something that is not immediately obvious in in any one test. Now, one can kind of explore that if uh, with a tool like ChatGPT, which I've done a lot of, uh, but you all only get a, a, a linear text-driven narrative about these things. Uh, if you're familiar with, with Infernotice, you're aware that Infernotice is very capable of being able to analyze text in a nonlinear visual way. And so the combination of these tools can be really, really powerful. And I see a question from Mark. Um, sure. Uh, he's asking um, if I can share some recommended tests, where to find them. Uh, so the tests that I uh, use, so when I'm doing this on myself, I've taken a lot of tests. Uh, so like I, I mentioned, you have you have MBTI, which is the Myers-Briggs. You have Strength Finders. Uh, you have uh, Enneagram. You have the Big Five Ocean, which is standing for uh, measurement of your openness, your conscientiousness, your extroversion, your agreeableness, and your neuroticism. Uh, you have things that may be a little bit more esoteric or not as quote-unquote scientific like human design, which brings in things like uh, astrology, the I Ching, the Kabbalah. You have more business-oriented things like Colby, K-O-L-B-E, uh, and um, True Color, DISC, Love Languages, something that's more about the, the shadow side. You have something like the Dark Triad, which measures your levels of psychopathy, Machiavellianism, uh, and sociopathy, um, and a number of others. I can I can get a list together um, and, and follow up with a list there's an all of those tests have uh, have official versions that are typically paid for, uh, but you also have some free free non branded versions that you can find on websites like Truity T R U I T I um, and uh, or another website called Similar Minds, which has a lot of free versions that are kind of open source. And like I said, I can I can follow up uh, after the fact with some of these resources if you are are interested in taking them. Uh, and I will note that um, while the paid versions are going to be the official, more uh, thoroughly created versions, a lot, um, especially when you're combining multi multiples of them, you can use the free versions, and in combining multiple of them, you do get a more comprehensive view. Uh, so. And uh, yeah, so I can follow up with some more information if people are interested in that. And I'd be more than happy to, you know, work with you, show you in particular how it might work for you and what I'm, what I'm, how I'm, how I'm applying these multiple tests. So um, yeah, so that's the basic idea that I'm, uh, I, I was working with is essentially combining multiple different perspectives of a person as demonstrated by these various tests and paradigms and trying to identify uh, where there's patterns paradoxes, resonances, dissonances, emergent behaviors. Uh, and the goal was if I can do this, maybe I can find uh, what is really unique about this person. And it's like combination, this alchemy of all these different things. And so uh, enough kind of talking and sharing about the background. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, and we will kind of jump right in. Like I said, uh, my goal here is is primarily to kind of share Kind of my thought processes. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go through a, a number of different ways that I have explored how to analyze this. And to be to be honest, um, it's it's a work in progress. Uh, I think this may be a a, a bit of a, a unorthodox use case in a way. And there I've encountered some some problems with it. I've encountered some obstacles. And uh, I have a, a number of goals that I'm, I'm looking to kind of get to, but this is all kind of an exploration process and, and hopefully uh, it will be uh, helpful for maybe this specific application for you if you're interested in exploring it or more generally helping you to kind of understand some of the uh, older and newer functions and capabilities of Infernotice. Um, okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and... <clears throat> All right, so we're jumping right in. Um, all right, so 
Now, the process of maybe I should show you a little bit, just a, a background of just how to actually upload something in case not everybody is familiar with it. So when you go to infotainment.com, you'll be uh, greeted with this this opening screen, which is where you're where you're going to be able to import a number of different uh, documents, text, extract from websites and whatnot. Uh, for the most part, everything that I will be doing today is going to be uh, just direct text that I that I've either found, generated, written, um, and I will be uploading that in in PDF. So, typically, I'll you can in this in this way you can go right here. You'll have this dialog box which allows you to upload a number of different versions. You can do direct text right here. You can have a, a file load right here, which is what I'm doing, and you can select the various files that you want. Um, in this case, we are we are working with personality. And so I have a number of different uh, things that I've already uploaded. And so I'll save ourselves the time of actually doing that um, and just showing you all the different versions that I have. So this first version that I have, um, we have something, it's, a, it's a, I'm labeling it person one multitest, uh, connective and words. Now this this second part, and I've made many variations of this. It, it's a variation of how we are connecting. And so, right here in to go back, if I were to upload a document, um, um, and I go ahead and upload a document. What I have the option to do is I have I have the option to either analyze the content of the files. Uh, so that's going to be just the words within that file or multiple files connected, or I can analyze the connections between files, and I will show you the difference between that. Um, down here, this is a relatively new uh, function that Dimitri recently made a, a YouTube tutorial on. Um, instead of just being able to analyze the words in the text, we now can detect certain entities, um, which is going to maybe more generalize it, um, or both words and text. So. These are the different variations I have that I'm going to go through is whether or not I'm exploring the, the content with words or the connections with words or content with entities, connections with entities. And part of my discovery is, in, is, is trying to understand which is best for this use case and what kind of information can I get from it. So in this case, uh, what I have here is uh, a number of different tests that I've in, 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 uh, included and I, I've, I've removed them already. So as you, if I were to bring this from the very beginning, this is what you would see. You would see a graph with uh, no high level idea shown. And you're gonna see these double brackets and you can see a number of them. This is the biggest one, um, but I have uh, a PDF of my human design. I have a PDF of my MBTI, which is the Myers-Briggs. I have a PDF of, of my goals. I have a PDF of uh, the ocean. I have a PDF of cultural index, uh, Enneagram, uh, R drive. There's a number of them. And so when you import the file and you're connecting, you're looking for connections between files, it's going to basically have that as the most prominent node for those. So in this case, you can see that there's a stemming from the various uh, files that are at hand. Now, I want to kind of get rid of them. Um, in this case, uh, what I am doing is I'm, I'm removing these nodes and so that I can see what lies beneath them. Now, in this case, when we're connecting the files, it's it's not going to just group all of the words together as if it was part of one document. It's it's primarily initially showing you uh, the connections to those files. So if I go ahead and I remove these, um, these right here, and this is a synthesis, so it's a, I kind of brought them all together and I removed that. Um, what we have now, and I think that should be all of them. Oh, there's love languages. I'll remove that one as well. Uh, disk. And if my graph seems way more dense than normal, um, if you're familiar with using, it's because I'm showing higher than the default amount of nodes. Um, so it takes a minute there. Let's get rid of that. I think that should be almost all of them. So in this case, now that I've removed them, what I typically do in uh, in this case is I'm looking at at trying to understand some of the higher level ideas. 
And so by revealing the high level ideas, you can see uh, a bit about the different aspects of of this this set of personality data uh, for person one, uh, and you can and you can dive into all of those things, which we which we will kind of get to. But I, I want to kind of explore a number of different variations of how I'm looking at these different things, just to kind of give you a, a feel for how you can connect things. So uh, we'll get, kind of get back to more of a, an in depth thing. But another version of this. Uh, would be the entities. Uh, and so this is connecting the documents across entities. And so you can see it's a, a far less dense um, dense graph because if you look and you compare the two, whereas this is just graphing all of the words across the, every single document, and it's just the straight up words, what the entities is doing is it's actually identifying uh, and bracketing in kind of markdown format uh, what it identifies as more important like concepts. And so it's going to have a uh, a more narrow, uh, focused, less uh, verbose graph. And there may be something valuable about that as well. Uh, as you can see, uh, in this case, the though I'm bringing in the same information, the main topics that it's identifying in the clusters uh, is going to be slightly different uh, than what was in the other one before. Another version, just to kind of show you, is connecting words. Uh, I'm sorry, is not uh, connecting multiple documents, but uh, showing the the content of all the documents together. Uh, and this is another. This is the 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 content of all the documents together with the entities. Um, I'm going to go through these kind of fast just to kind of give you the lay of the land. I have the same four uh, variations for a second person that you can kind of see through. And I need to pull up the question and answer. Sorry if I'm missing those question and answers. Because um, I'm out. Okay, so no one's asking. All right. Um, this is person two, looking at various contents and entities. And words, person three, multi-test. Okay. So where can I go from here? Um, so one thing that's uh, interesting about if I were to kind of jump into any one of these to explore, uh, and I think what I like best is maybe using the multiple tests connecting the content uh, and the words. And so to kind of give you just a, a quick workflow of how I maybe would work through understanding what is present in this graph for a person, um, in in the way that this graph is formed, uh, the, the larger nodes obviously are gonna be a more connected nodes. Uh, as they're in the center of the graph, they're more prominent, more, more central ideas. I mean, a lot of the implications of of the information here is is kind of very much so just connected to this visual layout. And so those nodes that are bigger are bigger ideas. Those nodes that are close to the center are more central ideas. Smaller nodes are smaller ideas, less connected. Uh, nodes on the periphery are more peripheral ideas. And so just at a first glance, uh, you can begin to just visually get a, a, a grasp of what is maybe most prominent about this person. Now, one of the first, as I know, one of the first problems that I kind of encountered in using this is when you create a lot of these personality um, assessments, when you when you upload them, there's going to be a lot of generic language in them, uh, which isn't necessarily uh, unique to that person. And a lot of those words are going to be used repeatedly. Think, for example, um, if it's measuring a, a, a variety of traits, it might have the word high and low, uh, moderate, a lot. And so you may see that uh, pretty often. Uh, in this case, for example, you see individual. Uh, in, in, if the assessment is referring to the individual, it's going to state the word individual quite often. And so that's, in this case, something as you kind of start to prune the, the graph, you want to kind of remove these ideas. Um, you can do it manually or you can do it uh, kind of in clusters and I'll show you how to do that but uh, what what you can do is I'm going to go ahead and remove some of these these bigger bigger 
more common words. Uh, and I apologize for it taking a little bit long. It's a little bit laggy. So you can move some of those bigger words and there's a lot more of those types of words in here. And I'm currently kind of trying to think through ways of, of removing that. That is one of the advantages of, of graphing the entities because in the, in the, in the entities version, um, you're not going to have a lot of that filler language. Uh, you're going to have more of the, more of the more important words, the actual concepts, uh, though the downside is you are kind of losing a little bit. Uh, there may be some, uh, important ideas or uh, nuances of the words that are not identified as as entities. So there's kind of an in-between. Uh, okay, so if you then go into uh, the workflow that I typically use is is pretty 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 basic. I'm going to just kind of work through um, the text analytics panel. Uh, I don't necessarily use all of them, but I, I really I mean, even just the first the first pane, of main ideas is is really helpful for understanding uh, the 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 what's going on in this graph, and so uh, you can look through and see the main topics. Uh, you can look through and see all of the different things. Now, you're going to have some of the main topics are very generic, like personality traits, and this is one of the challenges of this that I'm trying to work out, which is not necessarily clustering um, the data by the generic category of where the data fits in a personality assessment, but clustering the data by the uniqueness of the information within those categories. Uh, however, a lot of that will require kind of pruning back. And so, but just in general, you can look through here and you can begin to understand a, a bit about this person. And so you can see the number one thing about this person is community engagement. Uh, you can look through and you can see all of the the keywords that are associated with that in in the person and 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 of course you can you can zoom in on any one of those and begin to understand uh, more about the relationships of those words and and hopefully we'll have time to get get to that but going through you can really uh, see now this person uh, also has a lot about uh, personal growth now that may be because. Uh, a lot of these assessments are going to have sections about personal growth, uh, but once again, kind of pruning back some of the more uh, generic framework words, you can you can have a, more of an understanding of the particular words that are associated with this person's uh, this person's group um, personality synthesis. Uh, in after going through each of these. Uh, and exploring the various connections. Uh, what I like to do then is look at the most influential concepts. Now, whereas the 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 largeness of the nodes indicates a high connectivity, uh, and in, uh, the influential nodes are not necessarily um, the influential nodes are going to are essentially the the largest nodes. And as you can see right here, um, experience being pretty large, practical influence, community desire, uh, ESFJ, which is one of their scores. So I'm gonna actually just go ahead and remove that right away. Um, that's their MBTI score, uh, which stands for uh, extroversion, sensing, feeling, and judging. Uh, I also might wanna get rid of personality, but once you do a lot of that pruning, what you can do in, 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 instead of removing nodes individually, I like to basically deconstruct a graph. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm going to use this, this tool right here, which is revealing underlying ideas. And it's going to remove the most influential nodes from the graph. So it's just going to remove every one of them that, you know, that is currently listed. And, and by removing the most influential nodes, what you're doing is you're taking the, the light off of them and you're, and you're seeing what's behind them. And so when I remove practical, instead of seeing the big practical node, I get to understand why is practical such an important important concept. I get to see the things that are supporting the, pra the, the practical nature of this person. And so a lot of times I'll just kind of go through and I will uh, continuously and iterate through a number of uh, revealing the underlying ideas uh, to kind of see the makeup of a person, how it builds up. And, and sometimes uh, becomes interesting uh, I know it does in, in other use cases for sure, uh, 
but with a person, you get to see kind of how they're built up. Uh, and, and maybe as the graph becomes less and less dense, also the visual dynamic of how you're understanding what's at play um, also increases. And so I'll go ahead and I'll continue to remove these most influential ideas. Uh, and I'll see at each point um, what is kind of happening. And personally, uh, there's times where I'll, I'll make note of the progression. And so I can go ahead and I can um, download each single one and I can see the progression, the deconstruction of a person. And I, and I think even being able to see that deconstruction in a, in kind of a timeline of it started here and then below that was this and then below that was this and below that was this, you can you can have another way of um, exploring that that person. And so I keep on going down deeper. I'm seeing leadership impact. I'm seeing empathy and focus and engaging. I'm seeing adventures now now there. I think you begin to understand more and more about the person, but let's just kind of go all the way to the furthest end and just kind of see what is maybe at the base of this person's uh, graph here. All right, so we're a couple levels down now. Uh, we have offer, and I'm going to read this almost as a sentence, offer interpersonal enthusiasm, mindfulness, overextension, extroversion, value, fulfill creativity, enhance thinking, empathetic, solve diverse core potential, resilience, require mental emotion, frustration, develop the connection effective, effectively. Maybe that would be meaningful to you if this was your own uh, graph. Maybe you need to continue revealing more and more. But what we're kind of getting to now, as I was exploring as myself, was a problem that I was kind of seeing, and I, maybe you're picking up on this yourself, is that there, without additional context connected to this data, it can sometimes be a little bit generic just because every kind of personality assessment is going to be using a lot of different words, uh, a lot of the same words, but it's the the context of those words. It's the, the, the adjective or the measurement term that comes before that word that is really important. Um, and that was kind of one of the things that I stumbled upon as I'm beginning to kind of try to understand how to use this, this tool. And so I'll, I'll, I'll get to how you contextualize that, but essentially that's one kind of workflow that I would use. Uh, and that I think a lot of people use in terms of this, is this iterative revealing the underlying ideas and making note or observation of the levels of ideas and how it, it changes the, the, the structure and dynamic of, of the graph you're looking at. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, actually, I'll just jump to an entirely different one, just so I don't have to reveal everything again. Uh, this is, this is a, this is another person. Um, and we will go and look at the same exact, same exact, um, chart setup, which is analyzing the connection across multiple different, uh, files, um, and the words themselves. And so we can then go and look at blind spots. And blind spots is really interesting because blind spots is going to be using um, a, a kind of a community detection structural analysis to see where there are um, clusters which are existing within the same context, but can be better connected. And the idea behind this in, 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 in network theory, and, and hopefully I don't butcher some of the technical terms, but essentially um, when you have these clusters of, 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 of thought, and you can think about this in, in terms of a, a social network, you have clusters of, of, of friends that are connected either within certain communities or cultures. Um, the, the most important people in, in a certain way, or maybe not the most important, but a really uh, a significant person in particular is, is a person that cre is, has, a, has a, a bridge between communities. So if I have a group of friends and we all have the same friends, then any one person is, is, is not necessarily vital to my connection to the other friends. Because if that node disappears, if that friend leaves, I didn't lose connection with the other friends. Now, however, if I met a new person who is uh, maybe in the same uh, professional community that I'm in, but has an entirely different social network uh, than I do. We have not very many friends in common, but share a context that is our job. Um, that person becomes a really important person 
um, when it comes to bridging networks. Because if I become friends with that person, I open myself up to an entirely new network of people and they become my bridge to that. And uh, I believe the term for that is, a, is going to be a, a, a weak bridge uh, because we don't share a lot of common connections, but uh, we do have a bridge. And so it ends up being a portal. Um, and so that's kind of this idea of topics to connect is, is showing you where there is a way for you to connect clusters that exist in the same context, but don't yet have or could have more connections. Visually, this is also really interesting, I think, because you can you can highlight in the neck in this in the network and you can begin to understand um, where those topics and where those clusters can be connected and exist. And I think it's also just very fun to kind of go through all of them. And so what uh, a lot of users do and what I, I do myself is I kind of go through and I highlight that 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 those clusters, those topics to connect. And I'm going to just shuffle through a lot of them just to kind of orient myself and maybe just see which which um, gaps do I immediately find interesting. Uh, if this is something that you're doing personally and you're looking at your own personal uh, uh, personality tests or assessments or or if it's in a different use case, um, whatever text you're looking at, um, there may be certain clusters that become really, really interesting. And so it's immediately interesting for you to see, oh yeah, those topics wouldn't typically be connected, but there are some because they're using some of the same words. And I, and I, and I think it would be kind of insightful or innovative or helpful to connect these th different ideas. In the case of personality, you may be able to connect different aspects of yourself or see where there's gaps between parts of yourself. And, and maybe there are very good applications to creating um, some type of uh, self-development protocol or uh, understanding where you may have some um, vulnerabilities and, and can support yourself by, by leveraging this important part of yourself to help with this part of you that's not fully developed. And so if you go through some of these right now, you'll see um, so it's, I'll just shuffle through them. So it's, uh, part of it I need to is get rid of, this is where personally in my discovery, where having the big nodes makes it a little bit challenging. So if we go ahead and let's actually try, let's explore entities instead, because those big nodes aren't in here. So we'll go to blind spots. So this is looking at person two, all of their tests. Um, it's looking at the, the content of the files and entities in those files. And so if I, just to give you a little bit of an understanding of starting at the beginning, if I go ahead and I reveal the high level ideas, I see the clusters where we're talking about it are gonna be in their personal growth, their leadership style, their team dynamics and their intuitive decision-making. And so we can begin to understand what words are associated with those aspects of themselves. In the blind spots, if we highlight that in the network, we can see that there is a, uh, a, a way to connect team dynamics with intuitive decision making. Um, and so that's very interesting because maybe um, you can understand that uh, your role on, on that team uh, as someone who's strong in your whatever style of intuitive decision making, uh, that can maybe connect to uh, to the the team dynamic, how you operate in a team. Going through all of them, you have how, do, how we can connect our, 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 our traits associated with well-being to the traits associated with decision making. Um, and you can begin to explore all of these. One thing that I myself don't use so often, uh, because I, I'm kind of, I typically work directly in parallel with, with chat GPT. Um, and I like kind of interacting with it on my own. Uh, but at every kind of stage in this text analytics panel, uh, we have, we have, uh, the ability to generate insight questions. And I see I have a couple questions. Let me just sh show you this and I will jump to the questions. And so if we want to generate an AI insight question, it will go ahead, uh, ahead and you'll see it's generating using GPT to bridge the gap between the, the clusters that are selected here. One thing to keep in mind uh, is that InfraNotice's view is that AI shouldn't necessarily be answering your questions. They should be, it should be helping to uh, bridge uh, bridge the contextual gap and 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 help bring research questions. So it's not doing the answering, it's it's helping you to identify interesting questions. And 
Um, if you've watched a number of videos, you'll see uh, Dimitri just talk about how the hallucination aspect that some people are concerned with, with um, some of the large language models. In this use case, when it's just asking questions uh, with, the con with the context of this knowledge graph, the hallucinations can actually be uh, really insightful. They, they may be completely nonsensical, but in a lot of cases, they may um, they may help you to ask a question that isn't a typical question that is a really, really interesting research question and can, and can bring you some insights. Uh, so after you hit that AI insight question, you can and you can derive it directly from the context. So if we derive from the context, which is going to be grounded in this more, more substantially, you'll see that it's actually just asking you a question. It's not telling you anything. And you can do more than just this one one click. You can go ahead and elaborate. You can change the the phrase that you're asking here. You can you can challenge it, develop it. You can chat with it, um, and you can see what it what it says. So in this case, you know when we're when we're trying to connect the personality development with the personality traits cluster, it's at, it's 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 actually. Oh, I'm sorry, I I responded. So it's it's now telling me individuals high in conscientiousness and openness tend to actively seek intellectually stimulating activities, fostering their curiosity and personal growth. This drive for intellectual well-being can enhance their leadership style by encouraging continuously continuous learning and adaptability. Perhaps that's interesting to you. Perhaps it's not, but the the capability is there to explore. And let me just jump to see what questions are are there. Let's see. Mark asked, uh, it seems it's all about identifying those clusters. I think also Ash should help fit here. Of course, I want to control the direction and go further. Okay. Looks like maybe. Dimitri is helping me out uh, answering. Yeah, thank you, Dimitri. Okay. And Mark also commented on it being overwhelming. I definitely agree that some of those graphs are incredibly overwhelming. Um, my goal here is kind of to show you a variety of different ways that I've imported information and and hopefully by as I get further in these tabs you'll see uh graphs that are still very dense but um perhaps maybe a little bit less overwhelming and have a more intuitive value to to the the graph uh just jumping down now in this next blind spot some of the conceptual gateways so whereas the in the main ideas the most influential concepts are going to be the largest of these uh nodes the conceptual gateways are not necessarily the largest. Oftentimes, they're on the periphery, but they are they're strategically identified as portals into the conversation. And so, in this case, um, conceptual gateways are going to be these these aspects of a person that may be really great touch points. Maybe are are um, areas that are kind of, for lack of a better word, attack vectors for personal development or personal expansion or team dynamics. Um, and so you can see in this person, uh, optimism, if it will load. A little connection issue, I apologize. Oh, there we go. So optimism, not on the periphery, but certainly not a not a big not a big node. Um, what makes it a conceptual gateway in this case is that, as you can see visually, it's connecting um, across multiple clusters, and you can understand that both um, through the the geographic location in the chart that how they're in different clusters, but also through the colors of the lines. Those are associated with the clusters. So you see that optimism is going to be. Um, a pathway, a conceptual gateway to connect multiple ideas um, that we can open ourselves up to and to, and to explore. Uh, and you can see maybe we'll kind of go through them, see them. Conscientious is also going to be a smaller on the periphery, uh, and you can you can dig deep into understanding how the conscientiousness is connected across different things in this personality. All right, let me go through all of these. Let me get to more interesting. All right. So as I kind of stated before, um, one problem that I kind of, I encountered as I'm kind of doing this and how useful this is for, for my particular use cases is that a lot of the, 
the words are going to be the, the same across multiple personalities, even though there is some uniqueness. And, and I, I do have some strategies for removing those things. Um, bringing some additional context into it is going to serve a lot of value. So in this case, the context isn't necessarily additional context about the person. But what I have here is instead of graphing uh, multiple tests for the same person, I'm now exploring the same test for multiple people. And so we can, we can, in this case, now, what's interesting about this is I can go ahead and I can see how, let's see. Um, let's see, what do I want to use? Um, let's go ahead and explore the concept of the, the word empathy. So now what we have here is maybe a little bit more interesting in a team dynamic sense. Um, in this case, all these tests are going to be using the same vocabulary because they are all Myers Briggs tests, and so there's a lot of this, the, a lot of the same categorical or or just like processing language, like just the words that are required inside of the text about the person. A lot of those words are going to be the same, but what's going to be different about each of them is the words that make those persons unique. And so, in this case, I can kind of exploit that by understanding that empathy could be spoken about by all of these about all these people but i can see now where empathy is 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 um more particular to a a person and so in this case i will go ahead there's a lot of i can remove so i'm gonna go ahead just to clear up a little bit what i'm doing here is in the display settings i am increasing the number of I'm basically reducing how many show the words. I want to make these a little bit smaller. Okay, so in this case, um, we're talking about empathy. So empathy. I can see visually how empathy is connected to each of these people. And so this is person two, person three, and person one, one, two, and three. And so in person two, Empathy is going to be associated with harmony, inclination, stability, predictability, uh, practicality, whereas in person one, their empathy it's kind of has this line right here, uh, possess, goal, uh, actually the goal is not connected, possess is not connected either. Uh, we have depth, lead, profound introspection and so i kind of get the idea that in person one their empathy is at least in this test view a deeper a deeper empathy that is positioned around their leadership whereas in person one their empathy is more an inclination to bring stability and harmony and sociability and it's and that's their practice. That's how they're using it. Um, it's a practical empathy for for bringing together people. And so, what I can maybe understand about that in this case is where both people are exhibiting high tra high empathetic traits. One is more contextualized by their desire uh, by their leadership abilities, whereas the other one is maybe more community driven. They're using their empathy to understand people in order to bring harm harmony. And person one's using the empathy to understand people in order to lead them. Uh, and so it's a, 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 a slightly nuanced difference between the two. But um, just by kind of seeing this group, this grouping, we can kind of understand the application of empathy in different people. Uh, to give another example, let's see, we'll get rid of empathy. And let's go to maybe something more here. I like this word. Let's see something like thinking and you can see how in this case person one their thinking is going to be more around creativity whereas person two thinking is maybe an auxiliary function one thing i haven't quite covered is at any point when you select these these terms you can look over here in the comments the statements and you can actually view the statements that are associated with that with that person and i can see so this is where thinking is brought up 
for uh, person one. And this is where thinking is brought up for person three. And so you can have a, you can have a, you can further contextualize and you can actually see where that statement was made. Let me go ahead quickly and just make sure there's no questions that are open. Okay, we're looking good. All right. So that would be kind of one example of how you maybe are, how, uh, this is a finding that I had, I was like, oh, it's pretty interesting that if I bring, instead of looking at one person and not having any context or relativity to that person's traits, it's just clusters of information, which is valuable. Um, I do find it quite interesting to look at a combination of traits, um, a, a, the same test for different people. And I did that kind of across multiple tests. And so you can see that see that here. Um, here's, I'm actually comparing Enneagram with, with, uh, with multiple people instead of Myers-Briggs, doing that with the ocean, uh, love languages, et cetera. Uh, another thing, let's see. So this is actually, the same. this is crazy. I know, I know this is very clustered. If this is giving you a headache, I understand. It just so happens that my personality type is kind of loves us. So, <laughs> um, all right, so here's something, let me see what I wanna go through. So how do I, I wanna show you the compare function, okay? How am I gonna show you the compare function? So what I'll do is in this very dense, crazy graph, which I apologize is so unbelievably dense, Reload the graph. What I'm going to do here now is I I'm going to take uh, instead of whereas I just showed you how um in this case what I did here was I imported each of these persons MBTI results initially and so it's graphing them in the same graph as a baseline and I got this. But that's one kind of comparison. The more, the more uh, typical comparison would be to use the compare function. And this compare function, when it comes to personality use case, can be applied in a number of different ways. And so we'll look at how we can do that. When you open up the compare graph uh, capability, you'll see you have a couple of different options. You have the option to see how graphs intersect with one another. And so you're gonna see what do they have in common. You can see how graphs differ from each other. And keep in mind, um, the order matters here. So the lead graph, so the graph that I'm starting with, you're seeing how it differs from the next graph that I'm gonna input. And so what you're left with is everything that exists only in the graph that we're starting with. You have combines with, which is obviously gonna show the combination of both of them. And you have embeds into, which is a bit more, a bit more complicated. It's, it's similar to the intersects, um, but it's, it's, gonna, it's going to see, it's gonna basically, it's going to try to lower the dimensionality of the graphs and, and see how it basically fits inside of how how the graph you're bringing into it fits inside the other one. Um, and so I'll show you what all these look like and we can kind of explore what it means. And so what I'm gonna do here in this case, I'm gonna compare two peoples to each other. And so I'm gonna use the same exact graph for both people or the same version of the graph for different people. So uh, I'm gonna connect person one, all of their tests, how the tests connect with one another and examining the words with a uh, person to connect. And I'm gonna see what do they have in common. And so maybe this is a way of understanding compatibility uh, or lack of compatibility, uh, be it with whatever the relationship is. Um, and of course, what's important to know is like, you can increase the context of this. And so if the, if the, the relationship that you're exploring is more of a personal or romantic or platonic nature, um, you're gonna be interested or maybe want to contextualize that with um, some data around around that type of relationships versus a business relationship. 
So if we go ahead and we explore the connection of these two graphs. So this is now person one, and you'll see up here, you'll see the ordering, which is not important for the way that they intersect because no matter which way, which side they're on, the intersection is still going to be the same, but it will be important when we do the, the differs from. And so in this case, the visualization is maybe a little bit too intense, but what I like to look at now is over here in blind spots. And we get some interesting information. So we see the graph similarity. We see that 85% of the nodes are in common with a cumulative between a score of 2.48, of 98%. So these people are, are very similar. Um, and I can say, knowing both of these people, they are very, very similar. However, you may ask, well, aren't didn't you say that a lot of these words are the same? Yes, they are, which is definitely a um, obstacle that I'm trying to work with here. Um, but you can you can see what is overlapping and you can see what's missing. Now, one thing that I'm going to be trying to do down the road is um, pre-process my text to remove or figure out a way to remove a lot of these um, filler words or or um, measurement words. Uh, just to understand the keywords that are there. Uh, but I can see what I can do with this now. Um, I can see, go ahead, show the common overlapping graph only. I mean, it's most of it. Um, but what's probably more interesting for these two is to reveal the missing nodes. And so this is going to show the graph with only the nodes that they don't have in common. Not very much. So what do we have? Now, the words themselves might not be very interesting, but we can understand the context of them with the statements on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have uh, overextension oh, is a weakness. So I can see, what is that? This is person two, and it's telling me a tendency to take on too much driven by that diverse interest and a desire to meet the needs of others, potentially leading to burnout. That's an important thing to understand about a difference between these two people. Maybe you want to now explore why, well, why if these two people are have 98% graph in common, which would lead you to believe that their personalities are pretty close. What is interesting about person two that they, like what aspect of person two is making them vulner vulnerable to overextension. And so maybe you want to now go look at person two. So you have this kind of discovery, huh? In this group, person two has this weakness, but what makes them, why is that? And so I'll go in and I'll look at that same graph for person two and I'll, and I'll, and I'm going to look for overextension. See where I find it. Where is it? Where are you over extension? This is the downside of this. Is it so dense? Maybe one of you guys sees it and I don't. Oh, there it is. Here it is. So I can maybe begin to understand the context of this person's overextension. I can see. Let's see, what is their overextension link to? Let's see. See, overextension in this case, it's not only listed once, it's listed a couple different times. Okay, so their enthusiasm for diverse so there so it's connected to their enthusiasm, but not just any type of enthusiasm, it's also connected to their diver their enthusiasm for diverse pursuits. And so I see these two things. And so now maybe I want to look at di diverse and what is diverse connected to. This is the kind of rabbit hole that you can go down here. Um, and I don't know how much I will necessarily go down that rabbit hole, but hopefully you kind of are picking up on, on the type of investigation that you can do about yourself or about someone else. Um, to show you, let's try something where I want to show you recent poll graph. Let's compare.
Now I believe this is taking a long time due to a combination of internet issues and the fact that it is graphing like 34,000 words. So let's just reset, go back to person one. And now we will graph, I will show you that same graph, but with the same comparison, but a different type. So instead of intersecting with, we can see what's differed, um, which I think you can kind of assume what that looks like, what it combines, but I want to show you the embedding just to so you, show you visually what that looks like. And embedding is definitely a little bit more of a complicated conceptualization. Um, let's flip this one. And don't, don't always apply. Each of these different compare graphs are going to serve different purposes. Now, in this case, I don't believe the embedding is going to be super interesting. Exactly. Now, but what I have used the embedding for is, is embedding a person within an, a culture. Um, and I don't have that right now. I didn't, I didn't put that together. Um, but because these people are very, very similar, it's going to show you something that's very, very similar. But let's try, let's compare. Instead, we'll compare person one, connecting words with person three. To uh, let's see how person one differs from person three. Let's see, we can explore that. Okay, um, kind of losing track of time. I want to jump into different applications. Um, looking at resume. Okay, the last thing that I'll say, and I kind of want to open up to questions a little bit, um, is one thing that I like to do is in the parallel processing of um, is taking some of the data and bringing it outside of. So if I take all of, so here it is very, very, doesn't make, doesn't help at all. Crazy. So busy. But if I, but this is a synthesis. This is, this is a lot of data right now. This is three different people's results to like at least five different tests. But what I'm am exploring doing here is I'm now in the, the the next tab over. So we explored blind spots. We're now in relations, and um I've downloaded the CSV, and and one thing that I did with this is so what this is looking at is it's it's looking at the relationship of uh, the co occurrence of words, but not just words right next to each other. So if someone is highly emotional, that would be the words being right next to someone highly emotional, but there it's doing it in four grams, which means it's going to be more than just the words that are right next to it. It's going to give greater context to it. Um, and so it's measuring it's, it's giving context and understanding to the meaning and existence of these, these traits in a person. And so without doing any pruning, what I was exploring was uh, was exporting all these relationships um, and then and then bring them into to chat GBT, the uh, data analytics to work through, uh, in this case, what I was kind of wanting to understand was what how if these people were on the same team, how would they how would they fit? And so chat GBT is going to be, uh, if, you know, using it correctly, and this is not a webinar in chat GBT. Um, if you're directing it in a certain way, you can 
um, explore and use the data analytics tool to understand uh, this huge CSV. But just to, as an example of, of this parallel processing and how I'm leveraging the insights from Infernotice, or at least the data from Infernotice, is bringing it here and saying, all right, I have these three people. Here are all their traits. Here are some of the measurements of, of, of the traits and the words that connected with. Given that, can you analyze this and, and help me to understand the most ideal roles for this person on a team? And so that's basically what happened here is essentially I have these three people um, and it's looking at this data. So what's interesting about doing it this way is that I am able to not just have word to word, but sort, but the actual person to the word. And I'll show you a difference. The difference typically, when you typically go into a singular graph and you go into the relations, you will see that the source is going to be another term in the graph. And so you see the relationship between these two words and, and the foregram around it, as opposed to when you're using the, the, the connection of the documents, which the documents they themselves are the person that is now targeting these words with the person themselves. And I'm able to better understand what traits are the most highly associated traits of that person. And in the context of these other people, where are they best fit on the team? Uh, some other comparisons that you can that you can explore. Um, what I was doing here, in this case, I was exploring uh, predilection or behavioral analysis of, a, of addiction. Uh, and so I had some data on the, the psycholog psychological predilections or behaviors, the personality traits that are most associated with, with, with addiction. And so you can, you can source this information from scientific papers, wherever you may get it from. Um, it's the, the information I had here was, was pretty, pretty standard information about, um, you know, people that are, are more impulsive or, um, in this case, individuals, high sen sensation seeking all these types of things. And what I did was if I go and I reset the chart. So this is not, this chart's not about personality, but just show you a use case, an example of how to apply uh, the compare graph with the personality. Um, I'm, I was curious to find if I know the personality of someone, if I know some of the typical behaviors, the way they exist, think, are, um, I can compare that graph with this this uh, this uh, this graph that is graphing the words uh, around um, a discussion of those traits around addiction. And so if I go ahead and I compare these, I can see um, how well, let's go with intersects with person two. So where is their overlap? Now, keep in mind that the graph of person two has so many different things in it. There's a lot of things in, in, in every person that has nothing to do with addiction. And so there might be a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with it, but you want to see where there's going to be overlap. And so I can see the graph similarity. 35% of the nodes are in common. Let's compare that to person three. Maybe it's similar, maybe it's not. We'll find out. Okay, so now I'm comparing with person three. So in this case, the graph similarity of addiction, predilections, and behavior at a 35% similarity to person two. And what does it have with person three? Now, this is not the end all be all. Of course, once you have this comparison, you can actually zoom in and you can look at where is their overlap? What traits in this person are connected? All right, so this is lower, 31%. And 
And so you can begin to explore where there is, let's show the common overlapping graph only. And we can see, uh, we can see those, what, what is actually overlapped versus revealing only the missing nodes, which is gonna be a lot about this person that has nothing to do with, with addiction. Um, I guess let's get some questions. All right, let's see. All right, so would be useful to apply. So Joaquim uh, is saying, would be useful to apply network rewiring in order to get a dynamic evolution of corporate HR using the annual or monthly objective objectives achievement report. This way, best adapting the crew profile would be useful for apply network in order to get a dynamic evolution of corporate HR using the annual. I'm not quite sure I understand. Could you... Could you kind of uh, expand upon that, Joaquin, when you have a chance? I, I think what you're kind of getting at is um, apply network rewiring. I'm, I'm, I'm confused what you mean by network rewiring. But to the point of, of HR, um, I think there is definitely a use case of understanding. I mean, even if you have, so let me speak to that to some degree. Um, if you were to have just this this profile of someone, so this is this is one person multi test profile, um, looking at their entities, and so there's going to be differences in what the graph looks like, whether you're graphing words or entities. But for the sake of showing you this example right here, what this is showing you is just one person. So this is what is one person able to do? What are their capacities? What are their predilections? What are their behaviors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? What are their skills? And um, but now if you had information about your whole team, um, I can now bring in and the I can use the compare to I can compare multiple. I don't know why it's not showing me. That's strange. Um, I apologize for some of the technical difficulties. Um, it's a strange, I'm not seeing the graphs that I made, but <clears throat> person one multitask words. Okay. The, let's just say I'm going to do combine, right? And so now instead of just knowing what one person is capable of, what's happening here now is this is bringing in two people. And so you're going to see the full capability of a team, right? You can understand all of the different skills. And granted, I recognize that at this current stage, a lot of this is a really dense and overwhelming, but in the process of kind of pruning it back, you are able to now visualize um, a whole team dynamic. Like you, you can import um, multiple people's personalities or strength, strength assessments. So maybe you don't want to focus on the entire thing. Maybe it's too much. Maybe instead you want to look at, um, just their their ocean right so you can understand uh you can understand the entire team dynamic instead of just a singular person uh let me just jump in okay so joaquin yes um the idea is to use a tool called network rewiring which is able to almost continuously upgrade the network this way getting a dynamic movement in progress of the person and company's profile uh so i hope that answered but joaquin if, if you have Further questions on that, just let me know. Let me, I'll jump to Sam. Uh, we should be able to access the recording after the webinar. Uh, it's typically are made available, um, but that's uh, a Dimitri. Yeah, they should be available. Um, but feel free, um, if anybody is particularly interested in like having a deeper dive um, on how they, what they're working with in this area, um, I, I definitely recognize that a lot of this is I'm, I'm, I'm going over a lot of information. I'm not really zooming in on it. I kind of want to give you a broad scope of just how I'm kind of um, exploring this. And so I if you're interested in this, um, I would definitely be open to a, a, a deeper discussion and more collaborative discussion for sure. Um, and my hope was to have a, a more collaborative discussion here, uh, but there's a lot to be covered and I'm the only one talking, unfortunately. <laughs> so Sam, definitely um, 
feel free. I think if, if it's not going to be made publicly available, we can share it for sure. Um, and feel free to reach out with any other questions. Mark, um, what I really want from me and my customers and patients uh, have an info notice in an iframe. Yep. So embeddable on my web page or customer profile. And then the user, the patient can fly into his 3D graph and explore it with live interaction with auto highlighted areas and understandings. And then a chat to interact with my data. This is something as SSS. Um, maybe also be able to add comments or image to a node. Clusters might be able to program a flight through the info notice world to follow a storyline. Yep. Get it. All right, Mark. I mean, I think we're on the, the same page. Um, would love to talk to you. I actually, outside of Infra Notice, am working on on a, a more applicable tool um, where Infra Notice is just a feature of the tool. Um, essentially, my bigger uh, interest is uh, in a couple of different areas. I think that um, one, this this combination of assessments and how I'm, uh, outside of Infra Notice, I've built um, a pretty in-depth um, set of prompts and an entire like kind of framework to working with with ChatGPT of um, exploring and creating a much deeper report that is um, leveraging a lot of these insights, but is a more applicable thing for users, whether that be for coaches or psychologists or whatever it is your application may be. Um, so what I'm interested in doing is having that report, but I've also now been exploring personality emulation. Um, and so basically giving a set of instructions and framework with the data and allowing the AI to be, um, to emulate to a certain degree. And, and my, the results I've had with these things outside of my notice are really, really fascinating. So I would love to talk to you about this more. Um, I think the more and more context that you can give it, obviously, if you are, uh, coaching, or if you're in some type of therapeutic relationship with someone, you can con further contextualize this personality data mm -hmm. with, with, um, with transcripts of conversations, obviously all, you know, client and privacy things, notwithstanding, you have to, you know, figure that out for your, you know, that's a, that, that is a thing to be dealt with. Um, and there are, you know, doing things offline, not with chat GPT, having your own locally stored thing. There's all ways to do that, um, making sure it's, uh, you know, privacy focused, but the idea of being able to emulate, um, someone's personality, um, the level that, you know, with, with how I've done it with at least myself, and I've tested with a number of other people, um, the, the accuracy, um, is quite profound and definitely makes, at least me question uh, how deterministic things are within ourselves. But um, I think it would be really, really interesting to be able to explore uh, this. I, I, I personally think that it, it, to use InfraNotice as a standalone, um, at least I need to, or there would have to be some workshopping, not necessarily with InfraNotice as a tool, but with the application for this. Because at this point in time, like um, I currently am using InfraNotice as uh, augment augmentation to the my larger process, which is maybe why what I'm sharing is um, lacking some real punch. But um, another thing that I, I know that in, um, Dimitri is working on is other types of visualizations for the graph, 3D visualizations. Um, not sure when that will be made publicly available, but it seems to align with what you're looking for in terms of flying through and exploring in a more dynamic way, like a 3D graph of, of who they are. Um, but everything you're saying is, is definitely right at my alley. Um, and would love, love, love to have a more deeper dive discussion outside just about what you, what you're working on and, and how, uh, maybe InfraNotice can help or anything else uh, associated with it. So, um, did I miss anything else? Oh, you did mention, I see Mark, you, you mentioned, uh, you asked about making notes. If you're not aware at any point in time, you have both project notes Right. So project notes are going to be um, notes that don't exist in the graph. So like I could save these and these notes are just kind of like standalone. It's a little bit of a notepad. So that's one aspect of notes. But you also can make notes here. Like you can continue to explore this. And I and that's something I haven't covered yet. It's something I um, that is definitely powerful. Um, 
for the most part, how I've been using these tools, like as a an analysis is more in understanding it rather than furthering it. But you certainly can make notes. So if you had some type of comment about this person, or if it, it was you, you can say like intellectually, um, uh, intellectually stimulating uh, with external environmental um, uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm kind of like caught up on what it might be, but the point being that you can add, you can, you can, you can build out the graph um, further um, by adding to any one node or not adding to a node. You could say something about this person doesn't work well with high functioning um, anxiety, I don't know, whatever it might be. It may not make much sense, but I'm just on the spot. But you can add that too, and you can see where it adds in the graph. You can also explore, you can also now work with, with ChatGPT, right? So you can directly here, um, I can go ahead and I can ask, um, let's see. So in this case, I see, I don't know, anxiety is linked to, I have high, it has high anxiety and leadership. So I can ask, you know, what are the uh, impacts of high anxiety just in leadership? This is not very clever, just on the spot. Um, and I can save that and you will have a response from ChatGPT that's now added there and it will be tagged as such, which is very, very helpful. So you will see how anxiety and leadership can impact decision-making, yada, 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 yada. Point being, you can grow the graph, expand the graph with ChatGPT. Another thing to make note of real quick, and some people don't often see, is this filter up here. So I can go through and I can filter through and I can see only what's associated with person A, person B, person C. I can see essential statements um, and and I can also see what's called serendipitous statements, which one of our users, um, there's a little bit of confusion about what serendipitous, serendipitous statements are, are statements that are existing already. It's not generated by AI. They are statements that you put in there that InfraNotice is now identifying as a serendipitous statement due to its context and relationship, mostly through um, a structural gap analysis. Um, Looks like we got a lot of questions. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, I think we're all caught up on questions. Uh, feel free, uh, I know we're over an hour now. Um, feel free to ask any other questions you may have. Um, while you may be doing that, just some other potential you know, use cases that I look at uh being able to compare someone's writing or alignment so here's a resume you know comparing the resume with with a person's uh let's let's explore you know we can see how well aligned is a person's personality or their design with their actual work experience you know and not a set Plenty of people are not aligned with their work experience and maybe they get to uncover and realize that, you know, through data here, or maybe they know that personally themselves. Uh, but you can compare different writing. Um, I want, there's obviously you can also, I can import journal entries and you can see where there is patterns and clusters in alignment with your personality um, and all sorts of things like that. Um, there's one other see make sure i'm not missing any other points i wanted to bring up um okay yeah so i guess i mean just to kind of um wrap it all up the my my, my thought here basically is we can combine multiple perspectives of a person as demonstrated through 
uh, a variety of different assessments um, as a base case. We can bring those assessments um, into InfraNotice to have a more visual understanding of it and also have it be um, a launching point for the type of network data that, that InfraNotice uses. Personally, I use it for this particular use case. I'm not using InfraNotice on its own. I'm using it with a, a variety of other things, namely with with um, with ChatGPT. But um, without a doubt, uh, this tool is really, really helpful for me to understand um, how to direct and and what the, even the framework is that I'm using. Um, I'm able to not just take I'm not just take raw text and say, find patterns in this text, you know, AI, but instead I can use actual uh, data analytics, graph network graph uh, theory-based um, concepts like forograms or sentiment or structure to then use that data, you know, export out of, out of um, InfraNotice and use it however I may see fit. I think I got some more questions. Let me see. Okay. Um, yeah, we'd love to connect. Uh, so let me, I, I'll definitely, I'll make note. Um, so Sam, I think that's twice you wanted to, um, I would love to chat more. If anybody's, if anybody's interested in, in a, a deeper dive, like kind of with InfraNotice, outside of InfraNotice, just around this subject of uh, exploring personality, personality emulation, also like adaptive communication, how can we change the actual way that we speak to align with people's personality or or the, the metaphors that they see the world through. Um, these are all the things that I'm exploring. Um, I don't currently have any uh, public uh, area of this, this work, but um, I can drop my email um, in the chat. And if you are interested either in learning, you know, obviously I'm, you know, I'm here to support customers with InfraNotice, but also just personally fascinated and and researching personality. So um, we'd love to have a deeper dive with people, Matthew, um, Sam, Mark, any of you guys that are interested. I think it'd be really uh, great. And I'm working on some things myself. I haven't completed where I'm at with that in terms of making something that's like a product ready for the world is something that I'm still, I'm still heavily required behind the scenes to use. But um, you know, I, I am very interested in, in especially kind of testing out what I'm building, uh, that I haven't even shown here. This is just one aspect of it, but the, this comprehensive report. So if anybody would be interested in getting, you know, some reports on themselves and just kind of seeing how I would love to get more opinions and feedback on it, I can, I can share my, my email in the chat, wherever that is. Let's see. I am putting my email in the chat right now. Um, it's my thomas.m.ferrar. I don't know if that should, I don't think you guys see that. Yep, chat's only for you guys. Okay, me. My apologies, everyone. My first time leading webinar, so <laughs> don't know how all the different things work. Let me type the answer out. Um, I sh the answer should, my email should be under Matthew Spencer's question, but my email is thomas.m.ferrara at gmail.com. If you want to write that down right now, I'll, I'll spell that out for you. It's T-H-O-M-A-S period. M as in Mike, period, F E R R A R A. Not sure if you guys can see it in the question answers, but in case you didn't, that's it. And and um, if for any reason you can't reach me there, I am always in the the InfraNotice Discord and also answering customer emails. So worst case scenario, shoot us a email through InfraNotice. Um, would love to continue this discussion, whether it's within InfraNotice or just a, the wider conversation about what you're working on with personality and see if I can help, see if we can learn from one another. Um, 
but yeah, I, I hope that was helpful for some of you. I know it was a, a lot of, a lot of information, um, and maybe a bit all over the place, but I appreciate you guys, uh, working with me as I kind of figure out how to do this whole webinar thing. Um, and yeah, hope it helps. If anybody has any other questions, I can stay on for, uh, a few more minutes, uh, and I can even, I could probably even let some of you talk, I think. Let me see. Um, some of those that have asked questions in the QA, I'll, I'll allow you, I'll, I guess I can allow you to talk. It's very powerful being a host. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if any of you already asked questions in the in the QA, I, I, you should be allowed to talk if you'd like. Um, I'd be more than happy to stay on for another 15 minutes to chat. But uh, if not, uh, Pleasure speaking to all of you guys, and I hope it was helpful. And I look forward to talking more about it and and helping you out with your your specific use, use cases, whether it is in personality or whatever else in, in Infernotice. So.